Hello, everybody. So let's try number two from the take home test that you had on Friday. Take a look at the question. The two compounds below undergo a Robinson annulation reaction. Show the complete mechanism for the reaction. Is there more than one Robinson annulation product? If so, show the other product or products and the 1,5-diketone intermediate or intermediates that are on the way to those other products. Don't bother with a mechanism for any of the additional products, but show us the mechanism for the first one. Okay, so the uh, parameters around this test was that uh, your notes in the internet were fair game. The only thing I asked was you, you did not collaborate with any of your fellow students, that you do the work on your own. Uh, so the notes were fair game. Let's take a look at the notes. And in the notes, we talk about the Rab Robinson annulation quite extensively. Uh, here's the introduction showing that we have a ketone, reacts with a uh, alpha beta unsaturated ketone. We have to have uh, hydrogens on the other alpha carbon uh, because they're going to be responsible. We form a 1,5 dicarbonyl compound, and then those other protons can be pulled off and cause a further cyclization reaction. So here's the sequence of reactions that occur. And, uh, this is not mechanism. This is uh, complete reactions. We form a 1,5 diketone, but they're still going to be base around. We'll see when we do our mechanism. And that then causes this 1,5 diketone to undergo a cyclization reaction uh, to form a beta hydroxy carbonyl compound, which, because they're still base around, can undergo a dehydration reaction to form our final product. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back and we'll take a look at this reaction mechanistically. So you didn't have this proton on the test. I didn't have that drawn out explicitly. Uh, it's still there, of course. There's two protons there. I've only drawn one out because that's the proton I'm going to start this reaction with. I'm going to remove that proton with my base. The first step in the reaction is a simple acid base type of reaction. And uh, we notice that we have a proton here and two protons here and the other alpha carbons, but they're not nearly acidic because they're only next to one carbonyl group. This proton is on a carbon that's in between two carbonyl groups, so it's particularly acidic. So let's go ahead and remove that proton. Push our arrows and we're gonna form an enolate. This particular enolate, I'm gonna leave the negative charge on the carbon. Uh, There we go, we formed a new enolate. What's that enolate gonna do? Well, uh, it could just pull off a proton off the water and go back, but that doesn't get us anywhere. It can also attack the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. Now we learned in class that although it certainly is possible for this to attack the carbonyl carbon, enolates prefer to attack the conjugate carbon we get a conjugate addition reaction. So let's go ahead then and push our arrows for a conjugate addition reaction. And this time, just for, I'm going to go ahead and put the negative charge, instead of leaving it on the carbon, I'm gonna draw the, form the other resonance structure where we get that on the base. So we could have noticed now, how did I get that? Well, let's go ahead and draw it down below just to, to show you how we get it. So this first arrow is showing that we'd form a bond between the carbonyl carbon and the end of the conjugated system, the carbon there. So that's the new bond that we form, and this carbon now co corresponds to this carbon. So then we have to draw out the rest of uh, what's attached here, and 
we draw one, two, three to correspond to those three carbons. We have our oxygen on this carbon that's almost at the end. So we put our oxygen there. We threw the negative charge up onto the oxygen. So we put the negative charge there. We have a double bond that we formed here. So let's put that double bond there. And finally, there's another carbon attached to that carbon, which we also have to put on our molecule. Remember this carbon corresponds to this carbon. So there we go. That's how we would go ahead and draw the product of that reaction. Get rid of all this. And I'd like to get rid of, this as well, we're gonna move forward. So what can this do? Well, uh, I've, what do I have around? There's a few things it can do. We could break the bond in a retro type of conjugate addition to go back. We can always have that option. That's not likely. We can also, I suppose, think about attacking one of these carbonyl compounds with the nucleophilic carbon of the elate, which is this carbon here. But that would be a one, two, three, four membered ring. They're hard to form. So even though that could happen, it probably doesn't happen very often. Instead, we're gonna end up uh, reforming our carbon oxygen double bond. Then we're gonna go ahead and remove this proton. I'm gonna do it like this. A lot of going around here. I should have put the water molecule closer. But there we go, we pull off that water molecule. And finally, the electrons that are in that oxygen hydrogen bond are gonna find themselves residing on the oxygen so that we're gonna have a hydroxide. And this is just going to be our one, five dicarbonyl compound. One, two, three, four, five. As it turns out, there's a carbonyl compound over here. It's also one, five dicarbonyl compound. And we have our hydroxide. So what can happen here? Uh, there's a few things that can happen. It can always go back. But instead of going back where we would pull off one of these protons, let's pull off a different proton. Let's pull off that proton. Oops, didn't do a good job there. There we go. And when we do that, I'm going to I think the next time I have the negative charge on the carbon in the next position, instead of uh, going and putting the negative, I could have put the negative charge up on the oxygen, that would just be another uh, resonance structure, but I decided that I wanted my negative charge on that carbon. Now we're going to take our negatively charged enolate and the carbon atom is going to attack one of these carbonyl compounds because that would end up forming a one, two, three, four, five, six-membered ring. We know that we see a lot of six-membered rings in nature. Uh, they're easy to form. Uh, so let's go ahead and attack that carbon. It's hard to tell that that arrow is attacking that carbonyl carbon, but it is. And when we do that, we have to promote the electrons that are in the carbon-oxygen bond up onto the oxygen. There we go, this is what we've just formed. Look at that, now we have an alkoxide-like intermediate and we still have some uh, water around that came from the base uh, way back in this step. Uh, so we're gonna just pull that proton off. When we do that, we reform my, our hydroxide. 
There we go. And when we do that, we get this compound, which is, uh, there's our carbonyl car compound that started the whole thing off um, for the cyclization reaction. We have a hydroxy there, so we can call this a beta hydroxy ketone. And we know that they undergo, we can isolate this or they undergo a dehydration reaction. Most of the literature will tell you this is not the mechanism for the dehydration reaction. I am doing an E1 type of elimination. Most of the literature will tell you that it's an E1CB and there's strong evidence to say that it is a C1. E1CB, that is an elimination conjugate base, but I prefer simplicity in this case. And there we go. That's our final product. So can we form another product? Way back here, when we attacked this carbonyl, there's no reason we couldn't have attacked this carbonyl. And if we attack that carbonyl, we would get a different uh, Robinson annulation product. So notice that when we attack this carbonyl, we end up with the double bond that's next to the phenyl group. We use that for my reference. If we attack this one, that's gonna be the start of our double bond, so the double bond will be on the other side of the phenyl group. So here we go. Uh, we would have ended up forming this compound. This is the other product from the reaction. There's the one we formed, there's the other one. This is the three hydroxy ketone that leads to that product. So there we go. Let's take a look at the question, make sure we answered all the questions. Uh, we showed the mechanism. We showed the other products. We pointed out one of the 1,5-diketone intermediates. If we go and we look, in this particular instance, I suppose you could arguably say that this, one, two, three, four, five, is a 1,5-diketone intermediate as well. We can even count this way, one, two, three, four, Five. It's also a 1,5-diketone uh, intermediate that is a precursor to this. So there's actually two 1,5-diketone intermediates. Most of the time, you would only get this when you have a substrate which has a carbonyl uh, alpha beta, I'm sorry, a beta keto carbonyl compound like this. So that's it. Thank you very much.